Hi everyone, my name is Martin Nielsen and I'm a veterinarian. I'm specializing in research in parasites, in worms, and I sit here in my research lab here at the University of Kentucky uh, where we have an equine research institute called the Gluck Equine Research Center. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, worms and horses and why we need to do some research and what we're trying to do with it. Yeah, you're probably thinking, worms, that sounds pretty gross and I, I don't want my horse to have any worms and you're not alone. That is the normal conception that, yeah, worms, worms are bad and we definitely don't want those to be around. That's, the thing is, it's actually completely normal for horses to have worms uh, and they've always had them through evolution and most of the time, they don't cause any harm. However, disease can occur caused by these parasites and that's why I'm here. That's what my research is focused on. So today I'm gonna talk about a few of the worms that horses can have and then I'll talk about some of the diagnostic techniques that we use for diagnosing worm infections in horses. So let's look at some worms here. So here I have a, a jar, we have this fabulous collection of, of parasites here at the University of Kentucky, uh, probably millions of worms that we have in this collection. And this one is, is pretty particular. It's a collection of worms from 1923. Uh, these worms all came from one colt, one foal, six months old. Um, and um, it's dated January 2nd, 1923. So one foal had all these worms. What kind of worms are these? These are the worms that we call round worms, large round worms, or ascarids is also another name for these. All foals in the world get this particular parasite. They just have a phase in their life early on uh, where they get these parasites and then their immune system kicks in and then these parasites actually disappear completely out of the picture and in most cases they never come back again. Um, they live uh, for about a few months in the bowls. It takes them three months or so to develop from the infected stage to become adults. These are the adult worms. What's actually quite interesting is to look at um, their development. So when, when these worms first arrive in the small intestine of these foals, they look like this. The same parasite, same species. These are the large round worms but they're just considerably younger. So these are probably about three weeks old, whereas these back here are probably more like three months old. So they sit there in the small intestine, they eat away, they essentially eat the food that the horses eat, and then they grow. And they get a little bit bigger, so here are a few that have grown a little bit, so they're a little bit larger, and then they keep munching away, and they get even bigger, still, the same species, the same type of worm here, the large round worm, and they are becoming larger and larger. So these are still immature stages, larval stages, youngsters, kids, if you will. And um, sometimes they can get even bigger than this jar here from, from 1923. Uh, here we have a female, one single female that was recovered from one horse, and she's quite big. I mean. Originally, when she was put in this tube, she was about a foot long. She has uh, shrunk a little bit uh, just because of the, the, the fluid that she's in, but, but she's still quite big. And yeah, she looks a little scary, I agree. But the thing is, you will n only find worms this big when they are the only ones. So she has probably had the whole in small intestine all to herself. There's a reason why there's only one worm in here because she was the only worm in this horse and she had all the space and all the food to allow her to grow to this size. When you have a group of parasites, they typically become about this size. So, so if you ever find a large worm this size in, in your horse's poop, well, it's probably nothing to worry about because there's probably only this one that was, that was even there to begin with. So that's the roundworm, um, only in foals or primarily in foals, sometimes in yearlings, and only on very rare occasions do we see it in adult horses. 
Uh, most of the time, they don't do anything. Like I said, every single foal in the world gets these, and very, very few foal, foals ever have any issues with these worms. But when we do have the issues, it is a clog. It's a, an impaction where the small intestine gets clogged by a large number of worms, and that requires a veterinarian to try some medical treatment or maybe even surgery sometimes. Like I said, this is really rare, but that's what we're trying to prevent with our deworming, that we never get a foal that has that many worms. So what about other parasites? So there's uh, also tapeworms in horses, and you probably heard about tapeworms. They're like flat, often very, very long. They could be like 10 yards long with some species, but the ones in the horses are kind of a little bit unusual. They're not, you know, very long. This is just a whole collection of them right here. They, they're kind of, I mean, I often say they're like gummy bear size here. They're not really very big. Um, and there's several of them. And um, they live in the junction between the small and the large intestine in the horses. And again, most of the time, they don't do anything either. But they can cause colic in adult horses and young horses. Uh, but again, it only happens at very rare occasions. But, it, but this is why we also have dewormers to treat these tapeworms with. Now, there's also parasites that aren't even worms that you can actually commonly find in horses. And some of you may have seen these. These are bots. Yeah, that's right. These are bot larvae. So they live in the stomach of the horse and they spend whole, the, all of the winter in the stomach. It's very nice, cozy and warm, and they get all the food that they need. And then about Springtime, that's when they decide, all right, it's nice and warm outside, let's get out in the free, uh, and then we can finish the life cycle and develop into the bot fly. Now, the bot fly you typically see in the late part of summer, early fall, August, September. They fly around, they buzz, uh, but they don't sting, they don't bite, they don't really do anything other than laying eggs on the hair, on the fur of the horse. And you probably have seen these eggs this is a piece of um, dried skin uh, from a horse, and you see these yellow eggs, and you can find them typically on the legs, sometimes along the neck uh, and on the mane. Uh, and uh, these are the eggs that become the bot flies. When the horses lick on these eggs and they get them into their mouth, that's when the larvae actually get into the mouth and then eventually down to the stomach. Now, bots and bot larvae are really not uh, causing harm to horses almost ever. They're really, really mild parasites, but they're pretty gross to look at, right? Eh, they don't look nice, but actually they don't really do much. Now there's one more category of, of parasites that is probably the one you most often hear about if you have horses and you've had a fecal sample taken from your horse to look for parasite eggs. Uh, you get a result back, and if there is a count of some kind of eggs, it's typically going to be what we call strong-jaw eggs. So the strong-jaw parasites, that's the category of parasites that every single horse in the world has. It's just a matter of how many worms it has. And, and it makes a special kind of egg that you then get counted, and then you get that result back from your sample. Here is a jar of strong-jaw parasites, small strong -jowls. Um, I have to sort of shake it up like a snow globe. And you see the worms that are just falling down to the bottom very, very slowly. Really, really small. We're very, very different from all of the parasites that I just showed you. And these being so small. Um, and that's just for you all to know that if you're looking for worms in the poop of your horse after you deworm, there's a good chance you may not even see these. They're so small and they're not red, uh, so they don't stand out, and there could be hundreds of thousands of them, and that could still be completely normal. So strong-jaw parasites, that's what we most often deworm for. Most of the time, the small strong-jaw really don't do anything either. They just keep the horses healthy. However, disease can occur. Again, this is why I am here doing all of my research. It's because we want to protect the health of our horses, and even these little ones, they can also cause disease. So that's the reason why we do all the diagnostic work that we do. And speaking of diagnostic work, 
I would like to show you just a, an example of what it is that the veterinarian or their clinic does when you have a sample, fecal poop sample, taken from your horse to look for parasites. So I have a, I have a microscope set up here. And I've actually cheated a little bit. So I, I, I prepared a sample before uh, starting this video. So what I have in here is I weighed five grams, five grams of feces. I then put it into 50 milliliters of a certain fluid, a certain flotation medium, as we call it. So it's a, it's a solution, it's a sugar salt solution, and we, we set it to be at a specific density so that we know that it's heavier than the eggs and the parasite eggs would float to the top and everything else will fall to the bottom. And that's the principle of, of this microscopy that we're gonna be doing. Then we have a counting chamber. So the method that I'm gonna show you today is called the mini flow tag. Uh, there's a number, well there's actually a countless number of modification of these, this principle of egg counting technique. You've probably heard of McMaster or other techniques. Essentially, they do the same. I'm just gonna show you this because it's pretty neat with these, with these counting chambers. So you have these two chambers. There's one here and one there. And they each hold one milliliter of fluid. And we f we're gonna fill these two chambers up and I'm gonna do that in front of the rolling camera here. I'm, I may mess up, but then you'll all have a laugh, right? So let's try and do that. So the fecal sample is in here in that flotation fluid. I'm gonna mix it well with this plunger, up and down, up and down. Now I think it's well done. I have this nozzle here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and pour. And I have to stay quiet and concentrate here. I don't want any air bubbles to slip in. was one side. I did it. Not bad, Martin. So, going to not tilt it too much, but you may be able to see that I now have this uh, fluid sitting here in this chamber. Now this chamber has to sit for 10 minutes. And the reason for that is that we're using just the force of gravity to separate the parasite eggs from the fecal matter, everything else that's in that sample, like the straw, the hay, the grass, whatever is there, depending on which animal you have. You want all of that to fall to the bottom, and you want the eggs to rise up to the top of this chamber. At the top of the chamber, there is a thin layer of plastic, transparent plastic, that I will be able to look through when I look for these parasite eggs. And again, I have cheated a little bit. So I've already prepared one that's actually done the 10 minutes and it's sitting here on this microscope. So let's have a look and I can actually pull this up on the big screen behind me. So right here we have uh, basically looking at what we see through the microscope. And what you do is that you, ba you have to look through both chambers. And you basically go like this. And every time, and then you look and you keep an eye. All these round ones that you see, those are not eggs. They're air bubbles. And yes, you want the air bubbles to be there. You want to be where the air bubbles are because they're at the top of the chamber. And if you see the air bubbles, you know you're in the right place because that's where the eggs should also be. And lo and behold, there is one egg here. That thing, that thing there, that's our straw and jaw egg. It is uh, ovoid, sort of egg-shaped. And straw and jaw, again, remember, those, that was the snow globe parasite here the little ones, the little itty bitty ones, they make this kind of egg. And then you basically just go through the entire chamber. Let's see if we can find another one. Yep, right there, okay? And uh, then you have one of these fancy devices, which is called our hand tally counter or clicker. 
every time you see an egg, you click, and then it keeps track of how many you found. And once you're done with both chambers, you look at the number here, and then there's a multiplication factor. There's a number you multiply the number of counted eggs with to get your total number of parasite eggs per gram of feces. So that's a standardized way of reporting that number so you can compare it to the next sample and the next sample. So that's how that's done. That's pretty neat. That's about a, a 100 year old technique with modifications, but the principle has been around for more than 100 years. This is what veterinarians do to help you diagnose your horse uh, and check with parasites, uh, what parasites it has. Now, here in my lab, we've been thinking about this a bit, and we've been thinking, you know, it's all pretty neat and almighty and good, but sh couldn't there be, wouldn't there be a smarter way of getting that done, an egg count? One where you don't have to sit by the microscope and read one uh, sample at the time and where you have to rely on that person who's doing it. How good are they? Have they been trained? How experienced are they? How tired are they? Are they fed up with doing egg counts because they've been doing it all day long for weeks? I'm just saying, that also happens. You know, so there's, there's, there's a lot of source of variation just coming from whoever does it. And this is not to point fingers at anybody because we're all trying to be diligent, but we're humans. And there's error whenever it's something is operated by humans. So we thought about a way to do this in an automated manner. So I'm actually going to show you our technique. So you see this, this machine here? So what we do is we uh, take the sample, we prepare it, and I'll, I'll walk you through it in a minute. We we stain the parasite eggs with a dye, a fluorescent dye that makes the eggs stand out when you look at them. Then we take a picture of those eggs and then we use an app to count the eggs. And uh, let me just walk you through it. So again, I cheated a little bit. This is a sample from the same horse, that very same horse. It's been weighed and measured. It is in tap water, just regular tap water. You have the same plunger. We mix well. Then you exchange the lid, and now you have one with three filters in it. Uh, a coarse, a sort of in-between, and a very fine mesh filter. And the idea with these filters is to basically filter away all the particulate matter, all the straw, the hay, the grass, and only allow the eggs to kind of go through. So. I'm going to push down. And what I did there was to basically get four milliliters, uh, and this device just measures automatically four milliliters of this suspension into the top of this chamber. Then I have my counting chamber here, which is actually also a filter. It's also a membrane, it's just very fine mesh. And I put it on here, on the machine. I pour my four milliliters. And the test is running. So you'll see these uh, three bottles we have here. And uh, those are the reagents that we use for this first step where we want these eggs to be stained. So first we have a regular bleach, very similar to your household bleach. And we use that first to treat the sample with. Uh, what we're looking at is the eggs up there on the screen, they have an outer layer of lipids that we want removed. And that's what the bleach is doing for us because underneath those lipids is where we have the molecules that we actually bind our dye to. Those molecules are chitin. All of the parasite eggs, regardless of what type it is, they have chitin in their eggshells. So that's what we're binding to. So we're basically binding to something that's universal, that will bind and stain every single parasite egg that's in that sample. So that's what's going on now. Then we have a wash. That's actually what's happening now. This is the washing step. That's just 
water that we're washing with, we're rinsing that filter now and getting all the bleach washed away. Now the next step is then the dye. That's the bottle here in the middle. That's the one that binds to that chitin, that has that fluorescent dye. And, and that's going to sit there for one minute. There's a one minute incubation time to really allow that dye to bind really well and make the eggs very, very bright and visible on the screen. So the next unit that we're going to be using here in just a bit is this um, imaging unit. And so we're going to take, once this is over, we're going to take that chamber, we're going to put it into the imaging unit, and then the imaging unit is, big surprise, it's going to take an image. And then we're going to transfer that image to our tablet computer where we have the app installed. So I'm going to just set that up. We know uh, we have the app running here on the tablet. We, uh, I know the horse is one of my research horses, a really sweet mare that I have out there at the research farm, and sh her name number is, uh, is number 62. So I'm all set. And actually, that sound meant that the machine over here is done with the reagent dispensing. We're now taking that chamber that now has that sample uh, treated, filtered, and stained sitting here on top on the membrane, and we put it into the imaging unit, and then we hit analyze sample. So what's happening now is first, the unit is taking the picture. And once it's taken the picture, it then transfers the picture with a Wi-Fi connection from the camera unit to this tablet. That takes a few seconds. And once uh, that has happened, then it's gonna run the app and count how many X are on this picture. And then once that's done, we're gonna have a look at the picture and then see what the result is. So not right now, it says analyzing samples. So that means that it's already transferred the picture and the app is currently running. Uh, so that's it, it's done. So what you're looking at here are little dots that are circled. Every circle means one egg counted. And it gives you the count down here in the corner. The result is 633 eggs per gram for this horse. There's only one kind of eggs. So we're looking at strong jaws here. Asquits over here, it says zero. No asquits, but strong jaws. Mare number 62, this mare, she's an adult mare. So we do not expect her to have any ascarids. Ascarids, those were the round ones we talked about before. That's primarily in foals. So this is the expected finding. 633 eggs per gram. I'm probably gonna have to get her treated. That's a little high. I mean, and right now, today, it's actually uh, first of April tomorrow. So we're in the spring, everything's picking up. It's a good idea to get her deworm. And I could actually, you know, if this wasn't my horse, I could, then email this picture to whoever owns this horse. And on this drop down, I could even make a recommendation. What should we, what should we deworm this horse with? Let's say I have a Mexican. Um, you know, that's probably gonna be good for her. So, and then we can save the picture or we can always go back and look at it again next year or in two weeks if we wanna run another sample after deworming to see if, um, if the treatment actually works. So, how long did that take? Probably three minutes, right? I can assure you one thing, that sample from the same horse, I would still be working on it over here on the microscope. You know, first I had to weigh it, then I had to mix it, then I had to fill those chambers, then I had to wait the 10 minutes, and then I had to sit and go through both of those chambers meticulously, meticulously, and when you have a lot of eggs like this, that's just gonna take you longer to go through. So it's definitely gonna take more than three minutes. I'm gonna say probably 15 or maybe even 20 minutes sometimes to finish one sample. So there's time component. But what we also found is that ju there's just less error, less variation with this count done by this machine because there's no human error. So better result, quicker, and you can get a nice picture.
What's not to like? So, you know, I hope you enjoyed my, my little presentation here about parasites and uh, horses and a little bit about the research that we do here at the University of Kentucky. Um, just remember, we are always here for the health and well-being of your horse, and we work hard every day to come up with solutions like this. So with that, I'll leave you now, and thank you for your attention, and remember, it's normal for horses to have worms, and we are here to help keep them healthy.